ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम अनुजा कुमार द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी टू लॉन्च इंडिया पोस्ट पेमेंट बैंक अक्रॉस द कंट्री टूडे जीडीपी ग्रोथ सोर्स टू एट पॉइंट टू परसेंट इन फर्स्ट क्वार्टर ऑफ करंट फिजिकल हाइएस्ट इन ओवर टू ईयर्स लॉ कमीशन फ्लोट्स कंसल्टेशन पेपर ऑन फैमिली लॉ रिफॉर्म्स डेट्स फॉर म्यूनिसिपल बॉडीज एंड पंचायत पोल्स अनाउंस्ड इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड इन एशियन गेम्स बॉक्सर अमित पंघल टू वाई फॉर गोल्ड मेडल इंडियन वुमेन्स टीम टू फाइट फॉर गोल्ड इन स्क्वाश इंडिया टू टेक ऑन पाकिस्तान फॉर ब्रॉन्ज इन हॉकी Prime Minister Narendra Modi will launch the India Post Payment Banks IPPB at Talkatora Stadium in New Delhi today. IPPB has been envisioned as an accessible, affordable and trusted bank for the common man to help speedily achieve the financial inclusion. More from our correspondent. The launch of the India Post Payments Banks marks another significant milestone in the government's endeavor to take the benefits of rapidly developing India to the remotest corners of the country. On the day of the launch, IPPB will have 650 branches and 3,250 access points spread across the country. The launch events will be held simultaneously at these branches and access points. All the 1,55,000 post offices in the country will be linked to the IPPB system by 31st of December this year. The bank will offer a range of products such as savings and current accounts, money transfer, bill and utility payments. and merchant payments with dipender anand kumar air news delhi it will leverage the vast network of the department of posts which covers every corner of the country with more than 3 lakh postmen and gramin dak sevaks telecommunications minister manoj sinha said that after the roll out of payment banks the strength of banks will increase in the rural areas सबसे ट्रस्टेड अफोर्डेबल और एसेसिबल बैंक भारत सरकार बनाने जा रही है आजादी के बाद से लेकर के अब तक रूरल इंडिया में करीब करीब 49,000 बैंक्स हैं और हमारे रोल आउट के बाद लगभग एक लाख तीस हजार नए बैंक केवल रूरल इंडिया में होगा और कुल एक लाख पचपन हजार देश भर में बैंक इंडिया पोस्ट पेमेंट बैंक प्रारंभ कर सकेगा Indian economy grew by 8.2% in the first quarter of the current fiscal the highest in over 2 years the finance ministry has exuded confidence that the economy could exceed the estimated 7.5% growth in the current fiscal attributing the high quarterly performance to reforms and fiscal prudence finance minister arun jaitley said that india's gdp for the first quarter of this year growing at 8.2% in otherwise environment of global turmoil represents the potential of new india economic affairs secretary hc garg said that manufacturing sector grew by 13.5% which signals very good turnaround in the sector finance secretary hasmukhariya said the gdp growth rate for the april june quarter of fiscal year 2018-19 indicates clearly that several structural reforms introduced such as goods and services tax have started giving rich dividends unko bahut sahuliyat ho gayi ease of doing business ho gaya unka taxation ka incidence bhi kam hua to us wajah se ek broad based recovery manufacturing mein dekhne ko mil rahi hai aur usi ke karan ab ye gdp growth reflect ho raha hai aur pichle 5 quarter mein jaise continuously gdp growth rate badh raha hai usse ye baat saaf ho rahi hai ki reform ke parinam desh ko mil raha hai Industry bodies have said India's economic growth of 8.2% in the April June quarter is an outcome of reforms undertaken by the government in the last 4 years. In a related development Reserve Bank of India said non-food credit growth in the system accelerated to 10.6% for July as compared to previous year driven by loans to the services sector growing at a faster clip. credit to the services sector grew by 23% for the reporting period up from the previous period's 4.9% more than 5.29 crore income tax returns itrs have been filed by taxpayers as the deadline ended yesterday signaling an increase of more than 60% from the previous year officials said in new delhi the it department received over 22 lakh returns largely over the online or e filing mode in a single day yesterday 
as few more ITRs are expected from the residents of Kerala, for which the deadline has been extended till September 15th. The figures are expected to rise. The Law Commission has floated consultation paper on family law reforms. Ministry of Law and Justice in a release said that the paper discusses a range of provisions within all family laws, secular or personal. A number of changes have been suggested in the form of potential amendments and fresh enactments. More from our correspondent. As general suggestions to reforming family law, the paper discusses the introduction of new grounds for no-fault divorce accompanied by corresponding changes to provisions on alimony and maintenance. Under the Hindu law, it discusses problems with provisions such as restitution of conjugal rights. Under the Muslim law, the paper suggests reform in inheritance law through codification of Muslim law on inheritance while ensuring that the codified law is gender just. The paper also suggests expansion of the juvenile law to make it into a robust secular law that can be accessed by individuals of all communities for adoption. Since a number of issues such as polygamy, nikah halala, settlement of a Parsi's wife's property for benefit of children as well as adultery law among others are under consideration of the Supreme Court. They have been discussed in the paper but comprehensive changes on some of these issues have not been suggested. Sheila, Air News, Delhi. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. In Jammu and Kashmir, State Administrative Council has announced dates for municipal bodies and panchayat elections. Before announcing the dates, the council chaired by Governor Satyapal Malik extensively deliberated upon all aspects and feedback from departments of housing and urban development, rural development and panchayati raj and home. The elections to municipal bodies will be conducted in four phases between 1st and 5th of October. Elections to panchayats will be conducted in eight phases between 8th November and 4th December. Chief Electoral Officer has been asked to adjust the schedules keeping in view security, operational and the polling requirements. The Council also decided to grant one month's extra salary to staff engaged in the conduct of elections besides insurance cover. Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association is organizing the National Conference on Keys to Speedy Justice and Changing Face of Legal Education in India. President Ram Nath Kovind will inaugurate the conference in New Delhi today. Chief Justice of India Deepak Mishra will preside over the inaugural as well as valedictory sessions of the conference. Students, researchers and faculty members among others will attend the conference. Assam government is making an all-out effort to make the state open defecation-free ODF under the Swachh Bharat Mission. State Public Health Engineer Minister Rihon Daimari said nearly 15,000 villages have been declared ODF as of now. The cleanliness campaign was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the 2nd of October 2014 to put the focus on sanitation and to accelerate the efforts to achieve universal sanitation coverage. Here is a ground report from our Guwahati correspondent. Swachh Bharat Mission is moving well on the path of success in Assam. It is helping in creating awareness among people in the state about the importance of hygiene and the side effects of open defecation. State Public Health Engineering Minister Rihon Daimari said people in Assam are using household toilets constructed under the Swachh Bharat Mission. Pramod Kalita, a resident of Nalbari district, said using toilets helps prevent many diseases. बहुत सारे लोग बाहर जाते थे सोच के लिए सरकार ने टॉयलेट बनाने का जिम्मा लिया है उसके बाद से लोग ने घर में टॉयलेट बना के टॉयलेट में जा रहे हैं सोच के लिए उसके बाद बीमारी का जो दर था वो थोड़ा कम हो रहा है पहले लोगों को ये जानकारी नहीं था कि बाहर सोच के लिए जब जाते थे उधर से बीमारी भी आते थे अनादर बेनिफिशियरी पिंकी फ्रॉम मजबत एरिया सेड पब्लिक अवेयरनेस इज ग्रोइंग ऑन द हेल्थ रिस्क ऑफ डेफिकेटिंग इन ओपन प्लेसेस टॉयलेट के वजह से पहले जो लोगों के बीच में बीमारी आदि बहुत ज्यादा फैलता था लेकिन अब वो बीमारी बहुत कम हो गया है लोगों के बीच में एक जागरूकता आई है टॉयलेट का जो ये व्यवस्था है ये फैलता रहे सारे जगह में तो अच्छा रहेगा इम्प्रूव सैनिटेशन स्पेशली बाय वे ऑफ एक्सेस टू हाउस होल्ड टॉयलेट अंडर द स्वच्छ भारत मिशन इज हेल्पिंग इन अवर्टिंग लैक्स ऑफ डेथ दैट अकर ड्यू टू डायरिया एंड वॉटर बॉर्न डिजीजेज विद मानस प्रतेम्स रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम गुवाहाटी वल्सा विलियम्स फॉर ए न्यूज Centre has prepared a policy for ecotourism in forest and wildlife areas which will provide livelihood opportunities for the local communities. 
This will also educate visitors and enhance their understanding of nature. In a statement, Environment Minister Harshwardhan said to enhance the capacity of local communities, specialized training on ecotourism activities will be imparted. And now, news from the 18th Asian Games being held in Indonesia. As the Asian Games in Indonesia enter 14th day of action today, India will have athletes in final of various events and hope to add a couple of more medals to their tally. India will participate in two gold medal events today. Amit Pangal will fight his bout for the yellow medal in men's light fly 48 kilogram category against Hassan Bai Dusmatov of Uzbekistan, who is the gold medal winner from the Rio Olympics. The other major final of the day comes from the squash arena, where India's women team will fight for gold against Hong Kong after they beat the more fancied Malaysians on Friday. Today, India ends their men's hockey campaign by playing a bronze medal match against arch rivals Pakistan. All India Radio will broadcast off-tube commentary on the match from 3.55 p.m. onwards. This broadcast will be in addition to the off-tube commentary by All India Radio on the final men's hockey match between Malaysia and Japan today. There are two finals in each bridge event with the second being played today. Each final has five rounds and in the first final the Indian team finished top in every round. So there is a good chance that they return with a medal, gold or bronze. India's teams are also involved in the women's fair and mixed fair finals. The Indian contingent placed 8th in the table has 65 medals in their kitty comprising 13 gold, 23 silver and 29 bronze. China leads the medals tally followed by Japan or in Banerjee Sports Desk. There are two Indians among six individuals who have received this year's Raman Magsai Sai Award. Bharat Watnani and Sonam Wangchuk received the award regarded as the Asian version of the Nobel Prize. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Saira Mushtava. Thank you, Anuja. The country's GDP growing by 8.2% in first three months in 2018-19 is the top story in almost all the newspapers today. Hindustan Times reports, at 8.2% GDP grows at its quickest pace in two years. While the DNA writes, economy buoyant, rupee truant, GDP higher than China. In a first, census 2021 will collect data on other backward classes and will be finalized in three years instead of the usual practice of seven to eight years, coinciding with the 2024 general elections when the figures could well be a major poll issue, tracks the pioneer. Militants in Kashmir abducted and then released 11 relatives of state police personnel in apparent retaliation to police detention of the families of three Hezbollah Mujahideen men amid mounting tensions in the valley is widely covered in the Hindustan Times. After tit for tat abductions, all 11 relatives of JNK police released by militants. India heads of IT giants may face criminal charges over fake news reports the Times of India of a top government committee recommending criminal proceedings against India heads of global internet and social media giants in case their platforms are used to sp spread fake news. Children of single mothers will not be required to provide the name of their father for getting a PAN card as proposed by the IT department, seeking to amend Rule 114, reports the Asian Age. Equal share in property for women post-divorce, suggested the Law Commission, reports the Tribune. The Financial Express under the headline, PMO set to review policy on Monday, writes about the farm export policy floated by the Commerce Ministry. And finally, the Hindu reports of the Gujarat government announcing a cash reward of 1 crore rupees to Sarita Gaikwar for winning the gold in Asian Games in 4 into 400 meters relay. And with that, it's over to you, Anuja. Thank you, Saira. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to launch India Post Payment Banks across the country today. GDP growth soars to 8.2% in the first quarter of current fiscal, highest in over two years. Law Commission floats consultation paper on family law reforms. Dates for municipal bodies and panchayat polls announced in Jammu and Kashmir. And in Asian Games, boxer Amit Panghal to vie for gold medal, Indian women's team to fight for gold in squash. India to take on Pakistan for bronze in hockey. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.nic.in. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.